A few ways I reduced food waste this week. I wasn't eating my blueberries quickly enough and they started to get squishy, so I turned them into this syrup and it's so delicious and I froze the leftovers. After making another batch of wellness shots, I decided to use the pulp to make some muffins, thanks to the people in my comments that gave me that idea. And then I dried out the peels and I also froze my leftover turmeric so it wouldn't go bad. I also had bananas browning, so I froze those. I froze some spinach and I added to my frozen scrap bag. Oh, I also found these onions that rolled to the back of my cabinet that started sprouting, so I put them in water and I'm gonna see if I can grow them. And the zucchini was just not salvageable, so I just fed it to the worms. A few ways I reduced food waste this week, part two. After sun drying my orange peels for a few days, I tried to blend them up in a food processor to make a powder. Unfortunately, that didn't work, but then I placed it in my trusty 10-year-old blender and Nutribullet did the trick again. A few of my red potatoes had gotten a bit too wrinkled for my liking, so I decided to just plant them in my dirt pot so I could grow some new potatoes. The top and seeds of my bell pepper started to get a bit moldy, but since it's a harder vegetable, I just cut around the mold and I'm going to compost those pieces and then put the rest of the pieces that I used for cooking into my frozen scrap bag to make a stock later. Over the past couple weeks, I've noticed my crisper drawer vegetables are getting a bit moldier quicker than I'd like, so I cleaned out the drawer and placed a Swedish dishcloth inside to help absorb the excess moisture. My carrots had gotten a bit bendy, so I cut them up and placed them in some water. After only using a tablespoon of tomato paste, I decided to try the trick where you put it in a plastic bag and then separate out the sections and freeze them. And my onions from last week had grown roots, so I went and planted them out in the soil. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce your food waste too. Thank you for letting me know there's a better way to plant the onions, so let's go fix that. So initially I was approaching it like how I was growing these individual garlic cloves. Um, they would grow a whole new garlic bulb and you could also eat the greens from it like you would green onions. Um, however, I realized that it would be better if I just took off all those outer layers and then I could actually separate out the parts and get more onions out of it. So I pulled off all those little rotted bits and then you can kind of see where those onions are separated. So I just cut along those lines and separated them all out. So the two on the right are ready to be planted. The two on the left need to grow a bit more roots, so I'm going to put them in water. Um, the scraps I'll either use in my stock or in my compost. Um, and then I'll place them in soil and hopefully they'll grow new bulbs. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part three. My romaine lettuce was looking a little sad and limp, so I put it in an ice bath for 10 minutes, and then it got nice and crisp again, and I added that into a salad with some leftover salad dressing that I had. Instead of composting the leftover onion bits from my planting experiment last week, I actually chopped up the salvageable bits and wanted to try freezing them, and I was actually super surprised on how well the taste and texture were retained and how convenient it was. My broccolini had started to grow these gorgeous yellow flowers, but just so you know, they are edible, so I air fried the broccolini and they went really well with this dish. I also saved the stalks and just stored them in water in my fridge after cutting off the bottom so I could do something with them next week. I kept the little cucumber hat to prevent my sliced cucumber from drying out. Like my carrots last week, I put my limp celery in water to keep it crisp, put the base in water to make it grow, and put the leaves in my frozen scrap bag. Finally, after squeezing some lemons and limes, I separated the peel from the pulp and I'm blending up the pulp and freezing it for something in the future but it smells really good and then i'm air drying the peels without the pith this time follow along if you want to learn how to reduce your food waste too a few ways i reduced food waste this week part four my grapefruits from my csa box were getting a little squishy so i turned it into my immunity shot wellness shot juice for the week i also saved my coffee grounds and my tea bag grounds and i'm putting that on top of my fridge with some eggshells to dry it out and turn it into a fertilizer of course, I composted some of my scraps from my artichoke and other foods. A really exciting thing about compost that not a lot of people talk about is sometimes you'll get different seeds growing from the compost, like these tomato plants. And now I have one growing its own little tomato, and those all just came from using compost mixture. I was drying out the grapefruit skins like I have with other citruses, but then it rained, so kind of ruined that. I did the same thing I've done with my sprouted onions in the past, and I used a bunch of my wilted, gross-looking spinach in a big pasta dish, and it was so delicious. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce your food waste, too. A few ways I reduced food waste this week, part five. So I'd forgotten about my mushrooms and they got all dried and wrinkled out. So I tried just putting them in water in the fridge to see what would happen and they fully plumped up. I feel like it was like magic. I know that might've been expected, but like I was super surprised by it. My corn wasn't looking too hot, so I cut it off the cob and then froze it. Then I cut up and stored some carrots and celery in water because it makes it super easy to snack on and keeps them crisp. My CSA box came this week, so I wanted to store all my veggies properly, which included putting my new green onions and water in on the counter, cutting the bottoms off my parsley, and then putting that into water, just like flowers, and then also cutting the bottoms off the asparagus and putting in water. And both of those go into the fridge. Just like my cucumbers, I keep a little hat for my tomato so it doesn't dry out. 
And finally, I did notice a little bit of mold on my broccoli, but it was only a small spot, so I cut the pieces off that weren't affected and then composted the rest, including the stem, because I usually keep the stem for other purposes, but not this week. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part six. When I only needed a little bit of lemon, instead of cutting it like the normal way, I sliced it like this so I could cap it and rubber band it so it doesn't dry out. Some of my potatoes started getting those little sprouts on them, so I sliced them off and brought them over to my potato pot. In a previous video, someone asked what my potato pot is, and it's essentially a pot of soil where I bury potatoes that have kind of gotten squishy or started sprouting. They'll either break down and return the nutrients to the soil, or they'll start to grow roots and sprout, and then they'll form smaller potatoes that usually grow larger than these. Anyway, so I planted these little sprouted pieces closer to the surface so that they could sprout further. I also found this weird thing in the soil. Um, if anyone knows what it is, please let me know. My eggplant was getting kind of squishy, so I roasted it alongside the rest of the potatoes that I took the sprouts from, and then I turned the eggplant into baba ganoush. My celery got bendy, so I put it in water with some carrots. I also saved the leaves this time to use them for a salad or something. Of course, I added to my scrap bag, which is getting pretty full. Finally, after eating an orange, I used the peel to scrub out the sink. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part seven. So this week was a bit different because I was heading out of town for about half the week. So I was just checking to make sure that everything I had in my fridge would stay good and anything that might go bad, I would freeze or I would use in my breakfast for the next morning. One of the things I had to use up were these wrinkly old tomatoes. I typically really don't like the texture of these, but I tried just tossing them in some olive oil and seasonings and poking them and putting them in the oven to blister them. And they actually turned out super good, even though they look a little burnt. Looking at my fridge here, I can see I need to eat up that zucchini, that cucumber, that tomato, some mushrooms in the back, and then there's an apple up top. So I combined the roasted tomatoes with some of the other veggies I needed to eat to make this scrambled egg chimichurri mixture. Then I ate the apple on the way to the airport and the mushrooms, I'll use the little dried mushroom trick from last week. Oh, and I also made sure my green onions had plenty of water before I left. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part eight. I keep my roundish produce in this bottom drawer because I feel like they last a long time and they store well together, but I noticed it was getting pretty full, so I took out my mandarins, washed and cleaned them, and then put them in a bag and put them in the freezer. You'll see what I do with them next week because this week's video is already kind of late and uh, it was taking too long to make what I was making. Cucumber hat, scrap bag. We got a bunch of strawberries on sale this week, so I washed them in a vinegar bath before putting them in the fridge. I know people will say don't wash them until you're gonna eat them, um, but I like to wash them beforehand and just line the container with a paper towel to absorb any of that extra moisture. I've been cleaning out and collecting my eggshells, coffee grounds, and tea bag grounds on top of my fridge so that they dry out, but this week I finally added them to a blender and blended it all up together to make an awesome nutrient rich fertilizer for my plants and look how good my compost tomatoes are doing and enjoy this last clip of me trying to film a drosophila on my orange blossom before i got spooked out by a hummingbird anyways follow along if you want to learn how to reduce food waste too a few ways i reduce food waste this week part nine after collecting and freezing enough of my old squishy mandarins i boiled them for a bit and then pureed them with the skins and then made that into a delicious cake not only was my celery limp, but I also found a little culprit chewing away at the insides of it. So I took him outside and released him to the wild. I hope he'll be okay. And then I gave the good celery bits a water bath and I stored the leaves to use later. And then I did some fridge hunting and found an older onion half and then some celery and carrots that had been sitting in water for some time. And so I diced those up and then also added some of my frozen tomato paste and made a really, really good soup. I honestly kind of love it when sweet potatoes sprout because they look like little pieces of coral. So I sliced off the bits that had sprouts on it and planted it in my potato pot. And would you look at those little sprouts that are coming up from my compost? I think they're squashes. Okay, running out of time, but I planted the base of a butter lettuce from the store into the soil using my spoon as a shovel. And my fresh strawberries were looking kind of old, so I added them to my frozen blueberry bag. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part 10. So I usually store my herbs in water like flowers, but I realized I wasn't filling the water high enough to cover the parsley. So I ended up chopping up all the parsley and adding it into an ice cube tray with a little bit of olive oil and then freezing it so I can use it for future dishes that required parsley and olive oil. And I swear I never use my mushrooms before they dry up, so I added them into a container with some water and they plumped up good as new. I could tell this bag of spinach was starting to get those little soggy leaves on the sides and we had way too much spinach to finish, so I just threw this whole bag into the freezer and then I just use it in things like smoothies or if I'm making an egg scramble or chili or anything like that. 
And this isn't really a food waste hack, but I guess I had a couple of dips that only had a little bit left and a couple of vegetables that there were only a few left. And so instead of letting those just camp out in my fridge, I decided to have them as a snack. Oh, and I finally remembered to use some of my celery leaves as part of a salad dressing blend. And I saved the parts of my green garlic that I wasn't using and put it in my stock bag. Follow along if you wanna learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part 11. Also, ignore how bad my sunburn is. So I have had quite a few apples sitting in my fridge for a long time, so I finally decided to make some applesauce with it. All I needed to do was chop it up and then boil it in water with a little bit of cinnamon and lemon juice. No added sugar unless you want it extra sweet. And then once the apples get nice and mushy, I just use my immersion blender to mix it all up and make it extra smooth. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can just use a regular blender or food processor or even just a masher um, and make it as smooth or chunky as you would like it. And I just store it in upcycled clean glass jars and I freeze whatever I'm not using. Also, do not throw out your apple cores. Instead, we'll be storing it in a jar of water with cheesecloth over the top to make some apple cider vinegar. Finally, I remembered to clean out and dry my produce drawer because I noticed some of my produce was starting to get moldier a bit quicker than normal. And then I lined it with a Swedish dishcloth to absorb any excess moisture and then put all my produce back into it. Oh yeah, also I cut off the bottoms of my new broccoli stalks and I stored it in water to keep it nice and crisp. Follow along if you wanna learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, part 12. So I always like to save my eggshells by rinsing them out and then drying them on a pan on top of my fridge and then crushing them up and adding them as a fertilizer to my basil and tomatoes. And finally, after probably a month or two of collecting scraps in my frozen scrap bag, I'm making a stock to be used in a soup that I'll have later this week. So in my frozen scrap bag, I usually have stuff like onion peels, pieces of celery, leeks. Um, those are some stems from some herbs. And then also some of my green garlic stems, garlic peels, and carrot tops too. Then I just add water and some salt and boil it for about an hour until I get this nutrient-rich, tasty liquid gold. And then I composted the cooked bits and I added some brown leaves to it as well. After peeling my potatoes for my potato leek soup, I ended up just air frying the potato peels with some olive oil and seasoning, and it turned into these really delicious little chippies. And then of course I got a new scrap bag going as well. Follow along if you wanna learn how to reduce food waste too. So since my last video, I've learned that crushed up eggshells on their own take way too long to decompose, so let's make some eggshell tea. This is my old Skippy peanut butter container that I'm using to hold dried out eggshells that I dried out on top of my fridge and then also baked for a couple minutes at a low temperature and then crushed up and then also some dried out used coffee grounds. I'm gonna start by boiling some water. While that boils, I'm just gonna pour some of this in a few different containers. Oh, also an environmental engineer commented on my last post and said don't add too much because it could impact your soil's alkalinity. So beware of that. Okay, boiling water time. I don't really know how much to add. That looks good. A couple stirs. And then we're probably just gonna wait until the water cools down so it gives them a chance to soak. Look, Holly's jealous because I'm making some soup and she smells it and wants some. Okay, I've let them steep for about 20 minutes and I've added a couple ice cubes just to cool it down. And I think I'm actually gonna let this one steep overnight and see if it makes a difference. Okay, then we'll strain out the coffee and eggshells. Now I'll just pour it to some of these newer basil plants that haven't gotten any eggshells yet. Maybe do these ones too. So this is what I was doing before, was just putting crushed up eggshells on top. I think that still does help in reducing the amount of bugs that get into my plants, kind of, but apparently it just takes forever to decompose. And I'm adding the discard to my compost. Oh, and this is backed by research in case you're curious. So thank you for everyone who let me know, and hopefully that works a little bit better. A few ways I reduced food waste this week, part 13. So we finished these mozzarella balls from Costco that had a bunch of olive oil and herbs left on the bottom. So instead of throwing that out, I added it on top of my salad and then kept the rest in a jar so then I have some free olive oil now. When grocery shopping, I always remember to take the lonely bananas because those are always less likely to be taken so we don't want those to go to waste. Okay, vegetarians and vegans look away for this one. So we had a rotisserie chicken and instead of throwing out the bones, we boiled it for a couple hours to make this delicious bone broth. Um, but look how crazy it looks when you scrape after you let it cool down and you scrape the fat off the top. Ugh, so gross. Anyway, so we put that in a jar that we'll use in a soup later this week. And then I gave the little bit of leftover to broth to Holly and she was very excited. 
Finally, I combined the crumbs from the bottom of the chip bag and some broken corn tortillas, and I mixed them up in a blender and then added a few more ingredients and used it as a fish covering crust, and it turned out really, really good. Follow along so you can learn how to reduce food waste too. A few ways I reduce food waste this week, or for the past couple weeks, part 14. Also, if you can't already tell, I'm in a new house. So one of the biggest ways I've reduced food waste is having this dude from New Zealand around who literally eats everything. So get one of him or maybe like a bunny or something. Also, this garlic was sprouting. It looked really cool. Um, but then I just separated out the pieces and then planted it into my garden. This was still at my house that I was living at before. And it's only 20 minutes down the road. So like I can go back anytime. Um, here are some green onions that were getting really long. I had them in water and I chopped them and froze them because that's how my mom likes it. And so I was setting that up for her. And then I planted the bases back into my garden. So the lady that we're renting from has given us so much produce from her neighbors. So like a ton of apples, lemons, oranges, whatever you can ask for, which has been really awesome, but we're trying to eat them before they go bad. So with the apples, I washed a bunch and then made this really, really good apple crumble. Also, that was my under the sink compost bowl because now in this town, we can put our food scraps in with the green bins. Um, and then also I'm putting these apple cores into a jar into the freezer so that I can make apple cider vinegar once I have enough. Here are the crumbles. They're so easy to make and only take a few ingredients. I'll put the recipe down below. Then I finished off the week in Oregon for a project that you'll see soon. Um, but unfortunately, I had to waste this cherry chocolate jam because TSA wouldn't let me bring it. So that was sad. A few ways I've reduced food waste over the past couple weeks, part 15. When I use a can of coconut milk, but I don't use the whole thing right away, instead of keeping it in the fridge and worrying about it going bad, I instead like to put it in an ice cube tray and freeze it to then be used in other recipes without the time crunch. Speaking of freezing stuff, I actually recently started freezing individual lemon and lime slices to add to drinks, and trust me, it's a game changer. Victor filmed this one, so of course I had to include it. Our friend gave us her berries because she was about to go travel, and so Victor's showing that he's using the squishy blueberries that look like they're about to go bad instead of using the fresher strawberries first. We had some carrots starting to get soft so I chopped them up and stored them in water so they'd be an easy crunchy snack. Our cutting board was starting to get kind of a weird smell on it so after squeezing a lemon slice I rubbed it all over the board to get that bad smell out and then I added it to my compost and that compost went into our green bin because Encinitas is awesome and then I made a frozen scrap bag veggie stock. Follow along if you want to learn how to reduce food waste too.